Last week, we looked at Enoch's version of the calendar. And the similarities are that they're both done in wheels rather than square boxes like we do for our calendar. And they both have the concept of 7,000 years of human history. So basically, the idea is from creation of Genesis 1-1 all the way to the creation of the new heavens and the new earth is going to be 7,000 years. And these 7,000 years are broken up into earlier periods. Now, Enoch simply says it's a week of centuries, basically. So he takes the 7,000 years, breaks it up into weeks or sets of seven, of which there's 10 weeks. So 700 years apiece. What we're going to see today is with the Zadok calendar, they break it up into 14 periods of 500 years, easier to manage. Each one of those is 10 jubilees. And as you know from scripture, there's seven Shemitahs in a jubilee, which is, and then add one year for the jubilee year, and then the years. And so we'll get into that, all of that. So let's start by looking at our Dead Sea Scroll calendar site. And of course, this is off of our Bible Facts website, but this is separate. So the DSS calendar site, it starts off here with the Dead Sea Scroll date, and we're going to explain all those things really well. The Dead Sea Scroll date, again, focuses on the equinox and is give or take three days. And then it has a leap week, whereas the Pharisee date has a leap month. So it can be give or take two weeks. So quite a bit of a difference. And the Pharisee calendar also goes by the lunar cycle, which is the reason why they have to have a leap month. The Dead Sea Scroll calendar goes by Sabbaths. So you have to have a leap week to keep everything in sync. So anyway, that's the basic one for there. Now, last week we looked at the Enoch calendar. And again, just to see how that is, you can go back and look at it. What we're trying to do is get these where they're informative, where you don't have to necessarily watch a video, but you can just read, look at it, and figure it out. So today we're going to look at starting with the Zadok clock or the Zadok calendar. And the way this works is it's in a series of wheels. Now we're going to skip over the days or the outer circles this week, and we're going to talk about that next week. We're going to focus on the, the center wheels here. So again, you see this is 5946. It is a little 24. And these are the Dead Sea Scroll dates or how those work. Basically, it's the fourth year of the seventh Shemitah of the ninth Jubilee of the 12th Ona. And this is done this way because it's written out. If you were to be, if this was like January 1st, New Year's Day, we could say it's the first day of the first month of the first year of the first decade of the first century, something like that. And that's the way we would do it if we wrote it out like that. And this is that way. So what this means is, we'll come back and look at this here in a little bit, but just going down here, we'll just look at this. The Zadok calendar, which is at the top, it displays the year AM. AM is abbreviated for Anno Monday. It means from creation. So if this calendar's right, it's been 5,946 years since creation. If the, just backing up one, if the current Pharisee calendar is right, it's been 5,000 782 years since creation because this would be their new year at this point starting at midnight tonight but anyway if we look at this then if this is correct the year 6000 which is possibly the year of the second coming according to their calculations their prophecies and stuff jesus is coming back might be 218 years away but looking at it this way it's less than 54 anyway Okay, so coming to here, this is how this works, and it explains it that we have years, Shemitahs, Jubilees, Onas, and Ages. Okay, and it's displayed as this, so it should be fairly easy to understand. And then the Gregorian style here. So what we want to do tonight is just focus on these inner rings, because it's the years. The outer rings are the days and the months of a particular year. These are the years and the rest of the calendar, which I think is probably a little more important for us. And I want to show us the study pages on how those work. So if we come down here, we have the outer rings, which we'll wait till next week for. We have the inner rings, which are the ONA studies, and then a link to that same Gregorian calendar, just our link from there. But the inner rings, it's the same as if you come back here and go to the 
inner rings, the explanation. So here is the inner part. And as you see, the, the innermost circle is being highlighted and it's going around. So the circle starts at the top and goes clockwise, which kind of makes sense, just like if you would have anciently a sundial. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so the shadow goes from west to east, and it goes north usually, because we're in the northern hemisphere, so it would be clockwise. That's how we got clockwise. So this is this thing here, and this is just showing you how they work. Now, right underneath it is a study that we can go to the, one of the 14 ONAs, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But basically, this is an explanation of what we just talked about. It's the 7,000 years. So here is the four ages. Now, anciently, the school of Elijah taught, when I first started looking at calendars, we found a, a reference to Elijah's school of the, of the prophets that basically says there's 7,000 years, that are divided into three ages in the beginning, each 2,000 years. And then the last age is simply a 1,000 year reign. And they called these things the age of creation, the age of Torah, which is or learning, teaching, the age of grace, and the age of the kingdom. Now this age of the kingdom was supposed to be a thousand years, two onas, two 500 year periods, where the Messiah would actually physically reign on earth from Jerusalem. And that's what everybody's looking forward to. Biblically, in the New Testament, we call that the millennial reign. So we have 6,000 years of man's history and a millennial reign. So what we're talking about here, then, is breaking these up into 2,000 years. So from creation, it's the first 2,000, then 2,000 to 4,000, and 4,000 to 6,000. And we've got the BC dates here, but we'll explain how we got to that later. But these are the basic ages. And so you can see it here. Unas 1, 2, 3, and 4 is the first age. And then Unas 5, 6, 7, and 8 are the second age. And that's the first 2,000, the second 2,000. Third 2,000 is, is Unas 9, 10, 11, and 12. We're in the 12th one at the moment. We're in the next to the last Jubilee. So these are the 500-year counters. And each one of these 500 years is divided into 10 pieces. You can see that here. And each one of those is a jubilee. Okay. So those are for the, the big overview of stuff. So basically we have creation. We have the coming of Abraham, the coming of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus, and the new heavens and the new earth, according to their calendar. So if we drop down, that's here. This basically shows us the concept of the week. Now, this was taught by the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and the early church fathers. The concept that we have six days of man's time and a millennial reign. And so the Sabbath ritual taught us that truth. And so everybody looked at it that way. Most of the church fathers all agreed that the second coming, the millennial reign, would be basically 2,000 years away from the first time give or take. I mean, they weren't setting an exact date, but the basic outline. And you can see this here. Similar to what Peter said in Second Peter, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. And he was referring to Psalm 90 when he was talking about that, which talks about the lifespans and the calendar and things like that. So anyway, going on down, here is a picture of the onas. So here's the 14 onas. Again, 1 through 14. And this is basically showing us the una, the age, and the dates. So it's like 5,000 to 55, 55 to 6, 6 to 65, 65 to 7. So each one of these are 500-year periods. And they're counted 1 through 14. It's not like Monday through Friday, and then when we get to the next week, we just start over Monday through Friday again. These are tallied up. So you could almost ignore the age part in here. But the first age is on as 1, 2, 3, and 4. The second age is on as 5, 6, 7, and 8. And what's interesting is because they have prophecies talking about certain scriptures linking to certain numbers, and that shows you what age they're supposed to occur in. So far, they seem to be 100% accurate. But this is how their calendar works. Okay, so these are the 14 unas in the ages. So these are the unas here, the innermost circle. 
going on down and it should be explained here. This is the Jubilee year. And so this isn't a moving graphic, but the idea of this outer ring, the outermost ring of the inner rings is the Jubilee counter. So the, this is 50 years and this is the 50th year. So when you see this highlighted, it is a Jubilee year, year 50. What we're going to have is this is broken up. You can see into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are Shemitahs or seven year periods. So just like we have a decade and we have 10 of those in one century, you have seven Shemitahs inside of one Jubilee year, but that's 49 years. So then you have a Jubilee year, which is outside of the Shemitahs. And we'll see that pattern numerous times throughout the calendar. This is not super important for you to understand, but it will help a lot when you're reading things in the New Testament and they tell you it was a certain day and then three days later something happened. You will instantly know what's going on and you'll be able to calculate the years, study the prophecies the way the Essenes did. So this is the Jubilee year. We go down to the next one. These are the Shemitahs. So you can see in a Jubilee year, you have Shemitah 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And they are inside that 50-year period, the years 1 to 7, 8 to 14, 15 to 21. And you can just see how that works. So these are the Shemitahs, or the seven sets inside that, and then one year of a Jubilee year. And then it starts over again for each year. So we can see that. So down here, here's the actual Jubilee cycle. And so we're in Shemitah 1 year 1 to 7, then we go into Shemitah 2, year 1 to 7, into Shemitah 3, 1 to 7. And you can see how that works. So on the first calendar, we saw that this was highlighted, which is the 12th Una. We're in the 12th 500-year period. And this Jubilee was, was highlighted. So we're in the ninth Jubilee, the next to the last one of this period. And so if we, and then we also saw, I think it was this one here that was highlighted, which is the fourth year, We've got three more years and we'll go out of a speed of period. So let me just back up real quick to, okay, this one. And, and again, you can see it here. So right now, since it's 5946, 12th of Elul, it's the fourth year of the seventh Shemitah of the ninth Jubilee of the 12th Una. So if we started here, we'd count 12, Here's the 12th una. In that 10 year, 10 sets or 10 jubilees of this una, we're in number nine. And number nine of this whole thing, starting here, we're in the seventh Shemitah and the fourth year. So that's how this works. This will this will remain the same until next March when we will enter the fifth year. So this will be highlighted. And then the sixth, then the seventh, and then the jubilee year. And we go to number one here, then this Jubilee will move up one. 50 years later, we will be in the next one, a 500 year period in that first Jubilee. And it would be the year one. So that's how that works in that system. So let me go back to our inner rings again. So this is just a graphic of how it works. And then we've looked at the four ages the weekly Sabbath teaching about the 7,000 years, the 14 Unas in their ages, the years that they go by, the Jubilee year, which is the 50th, just showing you where that's at on the, on the calendar, the seven Shemitahs, which there's seven inside of a Jubilee plus the one year, and then the Jubilee cycle, how they all count. And then it's written out here. So I think that hopefully will help a lot. Now, the last thing down here that I wanted to show, because people ask, how in the world do we know, for instance, that it's 5946? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. We can figure this out through the Bible, through the Book of Jasher, through the Seder Alam, and through the Dead Sea Scrolls. But let's just start off this. So we already know then how this part works. This is the Jubilee calendar system. So the year of creation, according to them, was at the spring equinox that first year. So that would have been year one of Shemitah one, of Jubilee one, of Ona one. It's the first of everything, the first day of the first month of the first year 
of the first Shemitah, of the first Jubilee, of the first Ona. Whew. But anyway, that's how, just give me 59 <laughs> or 1, just give me a number. But this comes in very important in deciphering some of the prophecies. And the calendar just does it for you now that it's automated. So what I wanted to show you here, though, that'd be the year 1. This would be the year 3925 B.C., and we'll explain how we get to that here in a minute. But the thing is, if it's the spring equinox, then we know it would have been Nisan 1, because New Year's is always in the spring according to their calendar, the spring equinox. So when we get to the flood, and you can do this just through Genesis, if you look at chapter 5, we notice that Adam was 130 when Seth was born. Seth was 105 when Enos was born. So 130 and 105 is 235. So Seth was born in two, or no, Enos rather, in 235 a.m. You can just add them up that way. And you add up to Noah. And then in chapter 8 of Genesis, it says in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the 17th of the second month, the flood occurred. And so the 17th of the second month is the year 17 of the year 1656. So you can just go to Genesis and add these up. So it's 1,656 years, one month, and 17 days after creation week that the flood occurred. And when we get to the outer circles, we'll see something really interesting about that. But the reason we put these then is because every time we go from one date to another, it's give or take a year. And if we know it was in Nisan that creation occurred and the flood was in the spring, all of these dates are in spring or summer. And the reason why that's important is because on our calendar, if we start at the top and go January to January, that's one year. But their calendar starts in, in uh, March, so it's March to March. So between March to January, we're in the same year. Between January, uh, January, February, and March over here, we have entered a new year on the Gregorian calendar, but we have not yet entered the new year on the Dead Sea Scroll calendar. So depending on one, what month we're at, it's give or take a year. So if we can identify, and we don't really care so much, but we can identify the month, then we know to add the year or not add the year. So it's not give or take a year anymore, but it's to the year, to the month actually. So that's why this is important. This chart is important. These are just the key events so that we can figure out what date we're at at the moment, and then we can backtrack. So Abraham was born in Nisan. That's speculative, but it's probably the correct thing. And that would have been in 1948. You can go up to Genesis chapter 11, I believe, and go from the flood to Abraham's birth. So that gets us to 1948 AM, which is this date BC. So then the Abrahamic covenant is established. The 430 years goes by and we have the Exodus. And we're told that in Exodus chapter 12 that it was on the exact day of the covenant. And those were the same, the same date. And we were told they went out on the 15th of Nisan, 15th of the first month. So again, all of these are in the spring. Then we get to Solomon's temple being dedicated. And we see that in, I think it's 1 Kings. Oh, it should be in here somewhere. Where am I at? First, uh, yeah, First Kings 6, 1 and 38 talks about when it was dedicated, how many years from the, from the Exodus it was dedicated, and then start, they started building it then, and then it's dedication. So we know it was dedicated in ER, because it says that in the text, and it would have been in the year 2935, so 2,935 years from creation. And then we get to the temple destroyed. This is where it's a little confusing because you can't actually get this perfectly from just the Bible. The others you can. But if you use Jasher, the Seder Alam, and the other things, you can get it down, give or take a year. And it was on the 9th of Av, so we know it's still in the spring or the summer. So it was in the year 3338 which everybody says is around 588 or 587, somewhere in there. Okay, and so this runs us up to Messiah died. We, of course, we know he died on Passover, so that's Nisan 14 again, so it's still in the spring, the year 32 AD. And if that's correct, you can calculate the rest of these. 
Israel's second return, Israel taking the Temple Mount, the year 6000, that kind of stuff. Now what's interesting is you can do this, almost all of it from just the Bible, from the other manuscripts, and when we get to 11Q13, one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, it specifically tells us that the Messiah would die to pay penalty for our sin, and that event would occur one Shemitah after the end of the ninth Jubilee of their age. Now again, going back to this thing here, let me just run to the top. So if we have a an age being an ona, it's hard it's impossible for you to say which 500 year period are we in? Like around 30, 32 AD, somewhere like that, give or take 250 years. So you know we're in the eighth ona of that age. So if we're in the eighth ona, Jesus would have been down here. In the eighth ona, we're in the 10th Jubilee, which is this one right here, and we are just one Shemitah into it. And so that's the important part because, again, coming back down to the bottom, the whole concept, and we can see this later, that that occurred at the end of the age, minus 50 years, plus 7 years. It, it occur, turns out to be 32 AD on our calendar. Now, I don't want to argue so much that it's 29 or 30 or 31 or whatever, but the way they calculate it, that's the way it comes out. And I could be off a year or something like that, but we're trying to get this started to bring back this information so we can understand scripture better. So we can still argue later if it was 30 AD or 32 or 33 or 31 or whatever. But this comes out this way. So this is, at the very, very least, we're down to give or take a couple of years throughout all of time. At best, we're down to the month of everything. So that's why we come up with 3925 BC as creation. So this should explain everything and give you the graphics and everything. Now, at this point, I want to do one more thing before we finish. The onas to study. Now, these are 500-year periods. I just want to go through a few of them. This is the intro page with all the details. But if we click on, for instance, the first una. So here we have the calendar. It's this 500-year period these 10 jubilees, which is on a 1, years 1 to 500 a.m., 3925 to 3426 B.C., jubilees 1 to 10. So that's this here, this ona, and these jubilees. So what we do at this point is we have a 500-year chart for stuff, historical stuff. And so we have, here's creation, which we were told it was Nisan 1, first day of creation. So it's in the first Shemitah of the first Jubilee of the first one of the first age, but yeah. And so what we have, the first Shemitah, for instance, is the year 1 to 7 a.m., 3925 to 3919 B.C. So the a.m. and the B.C. dates are a seven-year period, which fits into the Shemitah. And then on here, we should have the exact date. So it's just the year 1 in this on. So... This is the first Jubilee, second, and in the third Jubilee, in the fifth Shemitah of that Jubilee, Seth was born. Now he was born at 1.30 a.m., and as you can see, it's one year into the fifth Shemitah of the third Jubilee. And that's how we could calculate this. So we will have all these things that we gather from the Bible, Jasher, Seder Alam, Josephus, Dead Sea Scrolls, any other information we can have that has a date on it. And we can put in here and compile these and create a master timeline. And that's what I want to do. Because when you go back to look for certain prophecies, sometimes uh, the BC won't tell you anything because it's just our system. I always thought the AM would tell us stuff. And, and you can calculate between here and here, this date minus that date is so many years. So that helps. But knowing the Shemitah and the Jubilee it was in, all of a sudden, seeing seven-year periods and 50-year periods, you notice things. Not necessarily that it's a prophecy, although that it might be, but you just notice things. It's just really interesting. For example, just one example, and then we'll get back to this. Paul says in the middle of the last Shemitah, the tribulation period, that Antichrist would desecrate the temple in the, in the middle of that seven-year period, so in year four, somewhere in there in the middle. 
Well, if we back up to the end of that age, according to their calendar, did anything happen in the exact middle of the very last Shemitah of that age? Yeah, the temple was desecrated and destroyed by the Romans, by Titus. That's interesting. So if you back up to the end of the first age with Abraham, did anything happen in the very last Shemitah of the end of that age? Yes, actually, it was the fall of the Tower of Babel. Now, that confused me at first. It's like there's got to be a connection. But the Tower of Babel is a corrupt religious system. The Temple of Jerusalem at that time was a corrupt religious system. The temple in the tribulation period will be a temple of a corrupt religious system. So the fact that they're destroyed, it's kind of interesting. And that may not be a prophecy. It might not be anything important. But when you start seeing patterns like that, and there's not just one or two, but there's a bunch, then you kind of know we're on to something here. I don't want us to make more of it than there is, but I want to have these tools for us to be able to use. And I think that will be fascinating. So as you go through here and see, there's not much here. Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalia, born, some of them became kings. The last thing here is Jared being born in 460. Again, you can get that from Genesis. So that would have been in the second Shemitah of the 10th Jubilee of the first Una. So this is the first 500-year period. If we go to the second Una, again, this is the second one, the date of uh, 501 to 1000 AM, which is 3425 to 2926 BC. It's the 11th through the 20th Jubilees. So the second set of 10 Jubilees. And here we have it again. So we go through here. The first thing noted is Enoch born in 622. You'll see that on his calendar. You'll see that in Genesis. And you'll see that here, which is the fourth Shemitah of the third Jubilee. And it was 622 AM. And then here's the BC date. So we have Enoch becoming king, Methuselah born, Lamech born, Adam died, Methuselah becomes king, Nama born, Nama was Noah's wife, she was born in 974, which is the fourth Shemitah of the 10th Jubilee. And then Enoch was raptured 987, according to the text, which would be the sixth Shemitah of that 10th Jubilee. So the first thousand years. So we don't have much there, but if we find more dates, more things like that in the scrolls, we can add them. See the third Ona, again, Ona 3, 1000 to 1500, the BC count, the third set of Jubilee years, 21 to 30. And we have Seth dying, Lamech, Mahaliel, Jared, just a few deaths basically is all we have. We get to number four, we're not going to go through all these, but number four, 15 to 2000. We know that the flood was 1656, right? So we go down through here, Noah, Shem, and here is the flood, 1656, which would have been 2270 BC. It was in the first Shemitah of the fourth Jubilee. And it was the 17th of the second month, right, from Genesis. And so we can have all that in here. We get down to Sarah and Abraham, and then finally the first age ends, the age of creation, in the year 2000, which would have been 1926 BC. Abraham would have been a certain age. and So we can go back and figure all those things. Now, if we skip forward to age 8, this is the interesting one because this at the end of this, the, the Messiah is supposed to come the first time. And so we go through here. We've got, and these, you, we talk about the 400 silent years. We have the first century and then 400 years. So this is the basically the bulk of this is those silent years, and we're trying to pull all the dates and information from the scrolls and kind of recreate what happened during the 400 silent years. So some of the things we have, Demetrius of Macedon was ordered, was asked by some of the Sadducees to come in. That was in, during the sixth Shemitah of the third Jubilee. And we've got several things, the Maccabees, the Pharisee Sadducee Civil War, Pompey entering Jerusalem, Manias, Herod, Christ being born, Jesus with his ministry in 29 and in 32, is the first Shemitah of the 10th Jubilee. Pretty interesting. Temple destroyed, Essene temple destroyed, Council of Yavne, and the age of Torah ends. So there's a few things in there, and we'll come back and add more things to this. 
When we get to the 12th ona, this is, should be interesting for us because we're at the end of the 12th ona right now. So as we go through here, I don't have a whole lot of medieval information, but some of the stuff toward the end, the Balfour Declaration, Israel's second return in 1948, taking back the Temple Mount, Golan Annex. These are AD dates. I need to put in the AM dates too, but they're in these Shemitahs. I've got them in the right Shemitahs anyway. Golan Annex, the Sanhedrin was reestablished in 2004. Gaza forsaken, according to the prophecy, in 2005. The Gaza War, and then I don't know if we'll put it in here or not, but 2020 was the year of the the COVID virus, which seems to be a worldwide virus, which could possibly be considered a plague. And so we're supposed to have those, they come and go, but a state or a county getting a plague is one thing, but a whole, not even a whole country, but most countries shut down for a year or two, that's a major plague. It may not really do much of anything, but again, it's, it could, could be considered a sign. And we'll see what happens. We've got one more jubilee left. But this is a start and understanding the unas and the ages and the jubilees and the Shemitahs and things like that. And then when we go back to the Dead Sea Scrolls and we read it was Shemitah 1 of jubilee whatever, of una this, of whatever that, we'll instantly know what we're talking about and we can plug them into these systems. Now if you want to take a sneak peek on this, these are all up now and should be fully functional. We're going to look at the outer rings next week. And this was, this is everything removed. This is just the outer rings, but this will explain how they work and, and all that stuff again. But we'll, we'll, we'll go through that. So again, from the DSS calendar site, dsscalendar.org, we have the currently year, if you want to do the Gregorian style calendar, and I advise you to start with that, get used to where they put those things. And we'll talk all about this next time. Since the year always starts on a Wednesday, everything's the same. Passover is always the 14th of Nisan, which is always a Tuesday. It just always works that way on their calendar. And according to what they said, this is the original calendar. The Jewish calendar that we use today, or that the Jews use today, is a corruption of the original calendar. I, I can't say that it is or isn't because I wasn't there, but that's what they say. And so we need to just start understanding that. So if the Essenes are known to be 100% accurate prophets, live long lives, have herbal medicine, understand the prophecies, explain, look forward to the Messiah, the age of grace, his death for us to pay our penalty, the coming ages, and they explain all this, and their theology, virgin birth and all that, is identical to Christian theology before we had the New Testament then that's something that the Jews have to reconcile because they're taught that the New Testament is junk and don't pay any attention to it. I pay attention to the rabbis, which are 300 AD-ish, more or less in there. Now we have manuscripts from their ancestors dating two to 300 BC that have the same theology as the Christians do hundreds of years before they were Christians. So now, even if you ignore the Christians, you have your ancestors to look at, okay? And so it's really important. So according to the New Testament, then, everything they teach is seen in the New Testament. The only thing new, really, is this calendar. And it's not new in the sense of totally unknown, because we all know about Passover on the 14th of Nisan. It's just when does the year start? And then there's a couple of extra festivals that need to be looked at. So there's some interesting things, some of which do apply to prophecy, of which some of those prophecies are in our time, most of which are back during the first century. But it's very, very interesting and be a very interesting study. So I wanted to just do that with us. This is our start with it. So just again, if we just go to dsscalendar.org, the real quick thing here is this is the date Dead Sea Scroll, Gregorian, weekday and time, and Pharisee date. And there are square Gregorian style, American style calendar. And then the Enoch calendar, which we looked at last week. The Zadok calendar, and then the studies for the time periods and the prophecies. And we'll get into that next time. 
So that's here. And of course, we have our main site, biblefacts.org. And whenever we're broadcasting live, we, it'll be here. And then we have our other things down here.